already doing this. All right. All right. Welcome into the PHNX Rising Podcast. Appreciate everyone joining us here on a Tuesday. Kind of feels like a Monday. Kind of feels like a Wednesday type thing. It's what we get with a holiday weekend. But uh, here we are. We're uh, coming off of a nice 2 nil victory over the weekend. Feeling good. Nice little respite, Mr. Owen Evans. Not three games in eight days, huh? Yeah. No. Off the clock a bit. Yeah. Three games in eight days is uh, rough, but it's, it's a lot a lot easier when they win all three of those games. That is certainly true. Uh, if I'm doing the math, that's uh, nine points, eight days. That's more than one point a day. It's pretty good average. Indeed. Yeah, not a mathematician, but it's pretty good. It's about 1.11 right there. Mm-hmm. Pretty, pretty solid. We'll appreciate everyone joining us. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun show. I'm going to recap a bit further into RGV. And now we have a couple actually little different topics uh, towards the middle of the show. We'll get into that. I'm not hungover, by the way. It's called tired. It's called moving for three days in a row. Max face. is hungover. I'm not hungover. He's hoarding all the beers. The beers are himself. actually a horrible look because they are quite He's hoarding next them to me. For himself. Look at them. Two beers for Max, one for me. Uh, this is what this man provides. He's supposed to be buying beers. But there we go. We have a great show for you guys today. Very much looking forward to it. Uh, Owen, what was your, you know, in retrospect, what was your most, you know, the most impressive part of the 2-0 victory? Was it the attacking flow or was it the clean sheet? Uh, it was the fact that they won three games in eight days. <laughs> I right? think that's the key thing. It's, it's more impressive when you look at it collectively mm. and you see just how much of a, um, how much of a everything kind of, you know, came together over this week and they weren't necessarily great at all times Mm -hmm. um i think second half we saw a team that was in many ways exhausted but managed to still push through it um and they that's the thing right they they, yeah they surrender more possession to rgv yeah i get that but they still manage in the end to get the job done they hold them out they prevent it from from being a problem and, and they ultimately get there and manage to uh manage to pull off a, a, an impressive result in the end and, and pull off an impressive week or again it's nine points in eight days that has completely changed i think the outlook of rising season yeah i think it's something that we discussed a bit on uh saturday's post game show amongst a lot of other a lot of other things but i think that's the that's the craziest part about all this is the narrative really has changed i mean you you talk about this team even two weeks ago i mean even if you're looking in the greater context of the season even a month or so ago, it's crazy how I think you not only go from are they going to make playoffs and are they even if they make playoffs, are they just going to be limping into it to they are now very much in serious contention for being a team that's really hot going into the playoffs. And that's something that you love to see and you hate to see if you're a rising opponent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, an interesting here, and Michael's actually right in here with the early goal was needed. I agree with him. And that's Absolutely. an important one, right? Is you look at the run-in that Rising have from here to the end of the year. Probably the, the most formidable opponent, I think, of the lot at the moment, based on how they're playing, is Orange County. Yeah. But if you get crazy. that early goal in that game, you completely change their game plan. You completely change what they are coming out and setting out to do. Um, when, you, when you get that goal in that moment, you take away the opportunity for them to sit back. You take away the opportunity for them to be really just a, a negative side in a lot of ways. Oh, and yeah. so I, I think that that was critical. Um... I wonder if Rising would have gotten the job done if they hadn't scored that early, but I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's it's always kind of in retrospect, right? Seeing, hey, goal gets scored, definitely helps to open things up. But while we don't, it's all always weird and hard to play the what-if game, we do know that in games where Rising hasn't taken the early lead or if their opponents take the early lead, it's typically doesn't bode very well for them. Now, granted, there was a bit of an exception during that this last three-game stretch where Vegas go up, I guess you could say early-ish if it's, you know, the tail end of the first half. Um, but Rising really weathered the, weathered the storm there, and they kept on going to the front foot in their latter two matches of, hey, whether it's going on the board or having a nice attack, they really have seemed to get it going a bit earlier as expected. And whether it's through kind of these random chances out of nowhere, whether it was during the run of play... We'll take it. Yeah, yeah, you take it, right? Again, a team, when you get to this stage in the season, you can forget in a lot of ways about how you play and how you look, all Mm. of that. What's important, we are at the business end of the season. This is a results game. 
And now more than ever, look, early in the season, you, you worry about performance a lot because performance is what matters down the road. Mm-hmm. Um, but late in the season, you just got to get those points. It doesn't matter how you do it, no matter what you do. I, I thought they were decent enough in the first half. I was perfectly happy watching that performance. And then uh, second half, they weathered the storm and, mm-hmm. and perfectly fine. I mean, RGV had a couple of chances. I didn't think that much that really concerned too much. Um, all in all, a good performance in a lot of ways when you look at it that way. Yeah, no, 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 you're you're not wrong. I mean, I think the interesting thing, right, playing against RGV is they've been, they kind of have stifled opponents, right? And especially even when you look at Rising, their last match that they played against them, I know we keep on harking back to it and we not try, we don't want to play revisionist history, but this is very much a game where if Rising weren't up to their snuff, this could have very much been maybe, what, a best case scenario, a nil-nil draw or something. This yeah. could have been an ugly game where Rising mucked it up and they got mucked up by RGV, but they didn't. They came out on their front foot, and I think that's something – that's the thing, really. If you kind of draw a line throughout this entire season, that's the thing that has been very hot or cold, is regardless of the performances re- defensively, regardless of the results as a whole, this team has not had a sustained attacking output – and other than that match against RGV, really over the last, you could say, what, month plus, regardless of what the result ended up being, they have typically been, if not the better offensive team, certainly on par with whoever their opponent is. Look, you have to remember this, and this is where that RGV game was critical in some ways. Again, look, the, the, the week as a whole has changed the perspective on this team. It's changed how you're looking at things. You're no longer asking the questions around are they going to make the playoffs or are they not. You're more asking the questions on whether they're going to make the home playoff game mm. in the first round or not. Mm. But just to put this into perspective, RGV going into that game, or coming out of that game more, sorry, they've got 18 games to play, well, 18 points to play for mm. now. Okay, across there, it's six remaining games. They're nine points behind Phoenix Rising. I think the chance of RGV catching Rising now is next to zero. I don't see it happening. Yeah. Monterey Bay, same number of games to play as Rising. They got 21 points to play for. But they're still a good way back themselves. They're seven points back. Yeah. It's getting tough. It's tough. Those teams are going to struggle to catch. Uh, and that that's critical now. I mean, seems like Vegas are out of it, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's just out of it. I mean, we'll talk more about Vegas later, I'm sure. But um, <laughs> but but those teams down there, Monterey Bay, New Mexico, RGV, you were worrying about them, I think, a week ago. Yeah, you were. I think no, we were worrying so. about them, talking about them on the podcast. Yeah, no, we were... about a week ago. Oh, we, very we were much saying were. who's realistically the the one that could threaten out of those three sitting just outside. Who could it be? Who's going to be the one you've got to worry about? And the answer now, if you're feeling rising, is none of them. No, none we... of those teams are scary. Oh, None man. of those teams are realistically, I, I think, going to catch. Yeah, no, very much. I mean, listen, you you look at you look at right, uh, right. It, it's not really a conversation as much anymore, right? Of you know, there's gonna be people out there, but it's not really a conversation. To your point, of are they making playoffs? It's are they gonna be hosting a game or not? And it seems like. Really, the top three, while it's not mathematically confirmed, the top three, barring an epic collapse, are going to be what they are. Seems like there's a lot of jostling and jockeying around for that fourth place spot. Currently, it's held by San Diego Loyal, right? Rising did have it after Saturday's match. Then uh, Loyal played another game. Boom, they're back in the fourth place Right, but there's, there's, another, there's another one I'll mention in there as well, and that is that Rising is only five points behind Orange County and has right. to play them yet. This is fair. So if Rising beats Orange this County in that fair. game they have against each other, you're not talking of a very big margin between those two you're sides not. either. You're not. It's possible that this team could go as high as third. For sure. I'd be shocked to see them take San Antonio or Sacramento. Agreed. I, I, let, let's say for, right, let's call it third, maybe a bonus, but let's say, right, if we're going, if we're purely going off of that fourth spot is the only one up for grabs, right? Let's say Orange County pulls away a bit. They hold their form. You're looking at, and Orange County, by the way, five in the last five, five wins in the last five. Pretty hottest team right now in the darn league. You're looking at that fourth place spot. You have San Diego Loyal in Actually, that pool. Actually, it's eight of the last eight. Mm. Well, he's just pulling off the last five four. To be fair, I'm te- technically not wrong. You're five, not wrong. Five out of the last five. I ain't wrong. No, that's You're not second. wrong. Please. Anyway, anyway. Uh, so, yeah, San Diego Loyal in that fourth spot. Fourth place with 43 points. Rising with 41 points. Oakland Roots at 40 points. You kind of talked about it, right? Rising's toughest match looking ahead 
is realistically going to be that Orange County match. You look at, let's go through San Diego, some of their some of their matches, right? They're, well, let's just go through all of them. They have Charleston Battery away, Louisville City away, Monterey Bay away. That's their next three matches, all away from home. Two away games on the East that Tough. aren't a midweek Tough. fixture in there, by the way. That's Saturday, Saturday. Yes. That's a lot of travel, okay? Because yep. they won't stay out there in the East for that whole time. When you're yep. doing uh, a, a Saturday, Wednesday, you stay in the you stay in the East. When you're doing Saturday, Saturday, they won't. I, I'd be very shocked, very shocked if they stay out East. They're going to have two cross-country trips yep. in a row. Very much so. And then, right, they're finishing off. I mean, you got two of your last four against lights. Okay, but that even that last one, Loyal and Roots in the very, in the, both those teams' last match of the regular season. Oh, uh, they got they got Vegas after that. So I, I, I said they play Vegas two of their... They, uh, They've two. got them in the last game as well, haven't they? Uh, they definitely do. They finish their season away. <coughs> Excuse um, me, that's right. We did have about Stadium. this. There we go. Whoopsie daisy. I forgot to hit the next page about that. Oh, I did. I thought it populated. But regardless, but, um, so so let's say loyal. Let's say loyal and roots are the set, the penultimate uh, match of those seasons. That very much. If that's not playoff indicator, that might be a scenario where maybe you know they get a draw. Both of them hurt each other's chances, and that helps rising. So right, we're, the moral story there: loyal. Tough go of it to finish. Then you even look at Roots' schedule, right? They play in San Antonio. They play an Orange County team that at um, away to Orange County, which is hot there. Um, you know, it's something, it's none of this stuff is given. Yes, Phoenix, they have technically that Orange County game could be a bit difficult as well, but that one is home. You're looking at everything else, right? Phoenix's season, their only three remaining away games are away to Tulsa, away to El Paso, and away to Colorado Springs to finish the job. You like their chances at home, and those three away games don't scare me. Yeah, Tulsa's a weird one. They're on, they're off. They're, we're getting depth in this on Thursday, of course, yeah. but they're on, they're off. They're very much, I mean, you saw they just beat San Antonio. Um, oh, yeah. That tells you about the team that they can be. Um, they will not be playing where they played last weekend. They will be playing, of course, in the baseball stadium. Mm -hmm. Don't you just love a baseball stadium away day, Max? Don't you love the beauty of the the infield that kind of reflects the shirt that Tulsa, if they're wearing gold, or their badge? Their badge is gold, right? Don't you love it when you have that infield there that looks like that? Why? Because the grass is dead. Deader than Las Vegas Lights playoff hopes. But it, it's, it's going to be an interesting one. Yeah, El Paso... Always not not one of the easiest away games. Always because they, I mean, again, they're a play, they're a team that are playing at the moment for their, their playoff hopes. Mm. They are right down in that mess, and Colorado right. Springs are as well. That's one of the few things that, to me, maybe changed it a bit because Rising will go in. Yeah, they've got a bit less pressure, right? Mm -hmm. And you can say sometimes that's works in your advantage, but it also can work to your disadvantage. In the other team feel like they have to. The other team could well be fighting for their lives in those games, and that that's that's the concern. That's true. I mean, it it also might be a scenario, maybe right, seeing how where the table's at. Maybe they just need a point, and maybe they're down to kind of muck it up, and maybe that's where something we're rising at that point only needs one point. There's a lot of what ifs, right? It's it's kind of we're a little bit too early to get into the specifics of it, but even just mapping it out. You like their chances of the away games. Again, that's what I keep going back to. Rising has demonstrated now. This is not a this is not even coming from a Homer perspective or the fact that we want to see ri Rising succeed. This is just based off the fact that you can kind of take from the season. Is when Phoenix Rising play at home, you can bet bet that they are going to have a positive result, albeit whether it's going to be a draw. Some might say it could be a negative, but they're taking points more often than not. Again, the only two they dropped a kind of fluke random game to Vegas out of seemingly nowhere and um, against San Antonio where they were down to 10 men for the vast majority of the match and they almost held on. So it's one of those where you like their chances at home regardless. It really just come down to away games. And again, going off those three away games, I like their chance against... Um, <clears throat> Excuse me, I like their chance against Tulsa. I like their chance against El Paso. I get what you're saying with Colorado Springs. That might be kind of the odd one. But regardless, I like them against them too. Yeah. No, I think they're, they're all winnable games. That's the key thing, right? I, yeah. I think you're right in that. You look at those games. You look at the away games. You look at the home games. None of those teams Rising should be afraid of. Oh. They are all perfectly winnable matches. And from Phoenix Rising's perspective, you've got to go in with the confidence that you can get that done. They can win every game that they have remaining between now and the end of the season in terms of just looking at the games as individuals. They are all very winnable games. Yes. They probably won't win all of them, but 
They they could. Exactly. Marlon in the chat, Phoenix Rising can win every game coming up. Again, I, I go back to those home those away games. Very crucial. I think they have a really good chance. One of the reasons they have a very good chance, friends at Circle K. Friends at Circle K, man. They are gonna get you cover for all of the away games because you already know, right, that they're they're massive, massive out in here in Arizona, but they are countrywide. They are a country wide concerned thing. about where you're taking this, Max, okay? Why? I don't know. I don't know. You you you, you make concerned. me worry. You make me worry. Buddy, you make me worry every day. I worry about you. you. Is everything okay? Is everything okay? Circle K can help you be okay with everything you got going on, man. They this have, is why I worry. They have absolutely everything, right? They have the premium gas fill-ups. They have, you know, the Polar Pops. You guys don't know what we're doing. We did the Polar Pop promotion for the longest freaking time. Hope you guys got your Polar Pops. But, uh, hey, there's another way that you can fuel up with our friends at Circle K. Here's what I want you to do. Go for free. Check out their Inner Circle program. Super easy to do. It's for free. You're going to download the Circle K app. You're going to go to their Inner Circle promotion within the app, also free. Join into that. Super easy. And you're going to get your first five fill-ups, 25 cents off a gallon. Oh, you like saving 25 cents a gallon, yeah? Yeah. You like uh, five free Polar Pops? Do you like money? I mean, it's that's, that's what we're talking about. I'm an ad man. Of course I like money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got five free Polar Pops when you sign up. You get a bunch of you know free snacks, whatnot, all of that jazz. And every uh, six snack or hot menu item moving forward is going to be free. Circle K literally just hooks you up with all kinds of free stuff. Again, download the Circle K app and join Inner Circle. All for free. Shout out, Circle K. Circle K? You know, also I want to shout out, uh, you're drinking them right now. How's that? How's that wow treating you? He's finally restocked the wows. That's I've, I've been bugging this guy for weeks, that's months. Not, that's why didn't we have wows in the fridge? We got <clears> wows <throat> in the fridge now. Oh boy! Well, we do have wows. Four peaks, right? You see on screen. They got all the delicious things: the hop knot, the kilt lifter, the hazy, all of that jazz. Shout out Four Peaks. They're hooking us up with wows. Uh, I have bought Four Peaks beers in the past. People already know. And you can get some Four Peaks for yourself. Go to their A Street Pub. Get on location. They have their Pumpkin Porter, the Seasonal Jazz. It's about that time. Always good. Go channel your inner, uh, what's it called? Inner inner basic, basic, basic um, B, whatever. Ooh. Yeah. 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 I, I mean. Like a better term. Like mm. a better term. Yeah. Go channel your inner basicness if you wish. But it is honestly delicious. Even I have enjoyed a Pumpkin Porter and I'm... Definitely not basic. Definitely not. Um, but yeah, check out Four Peaks A Street Pub or check uh, get, grab their beer anywhere. Go to at Four Peaks Pub or at Four Peaks Brew on Instagram. Find them near you. And you must be 21 years or older to enjoy responsibly. Like that pause for dramatic yeah. effect. Yeah. The yeah. Uh, chat's having a fun time. Yeah, the chat's... Uh, I don't know what the chat's saying. Who knows? Who knows? We'll just move right along. We will move absolutely right along. You know, there was something that you brought up before we started that you kind of want to talk to, right? That this is getting to intensive, not playoff atmosphere, but you know, we're building towards that. And these are very pivotal matches. The weather's cooling down. And I think really where you're going with this is, right, based on all the stakes and what Rising has coming up, you were mentioning that you're looking for a more, how should I put it, a response from fans out in the community. Is that yeah. right? No, that's true. That's okay. true. I think there's a a lot we can talk about on this, and it's we, we'll we'll kind of skim the surface today, of course, sure. because we could do multiple oh, yeah. episodes on oh, this yeah. topic alone. Um, we need to talk about. I think the crowds have been underwhelming this year. Um, I think that's perfectly fair to to admit. Um. The tenses have not been up to what they should have been after the initial game where it was packed. Um, that, was that was crazy. Yeah, and so now you're in that position whereby it's like, okay, this team realistically needs the um, needs the backing in there, especially at this time of the season. These games yep. are critical. There is no time to waste in terms of making sure that they're able to get uh, these... Again, you, you, you're able to get these results... That, they're perfectly winnable games. Yep. You want to have that crowd on your side and make sure that you're making the opponent feel intimidated in there. But overall, I, I just think, look, the, the club's going to have to do more to try and encourage that. Now, one good sign, of course, we did see the recent ticket offer. They're reducing uh, some ticket prices for the next four games. Like Again, that. four home games remain like in the regular season. You like can get that. them for the price of three. That's a great first step. Um, but what else are you thinking, Max? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see Pluck Adman's. Pluck Adman. Let's see what he thinks. No, I mean, it's, it's 
you know, it's it, it, it it's it's a it's a weird one, right? And it's not it's not making excuses for the team or anything like that. But I'm always curious in that first year, like purely just going off of what does the fan base look like, especially when you're moving to and I say first year in moving to a new stadium, right? Are you seeing a lot of the people who have been traveling and going to watch the team play, whether they are playing in Peoria back in the day or in Tempe or at Wild Horse Pass? Like, is it the same contingent of fans? Are you are you seeing a drop off of some fans that maybe were going to Wild Horse Pass or Tempe? Are they not coming anymore? Are you getting new fans who now this um, this uh, what's it called? The location is a bit better for them. I'm always curious of that purely just based on your location. What are the fans looking like? I do say the one thing that I really thought was going to be a, a massive game changer for them, and I think it's helped on certain nights, is the Valley Metro partnership. I just I think that's really cool. I think that's something where right your game ticket is your pass is massive, and it allows a lot of people who either normally wouldn't want to come to the game or maybe they don't have access to a car or whatever like that, or they just want to have a couple beers and not have to worry about it. I thought that would be maybe a bit more consistent throughout, more of a game changer. Maybe we'll see a play dividends, especially with school coming back in a session and maybe cooler temperatures, but it's tough, man. Like I think it's really, this is, again, it's not me trying to cater. I'm just, I feel that first year, you don't want to use it as a throwaway by any means, but you, it's a lot of like, taking a step back and seeing what your trend is and everything like that. It's a lot to juggle. Yeah. Um, I, I think as well, we should talk about some of the stuff that's been happening in the ground as well. Um, obviously, we saw the last game. Things, a uh, little bit of change of approach, I think, on times from the club. There yeah. was more in terms of attempts off pregame and halftime entertainment, even what, if what's it... Your th- what's your thoughts? Well, you it, like felt, it felt a bit chaotic. Um, don't say what... You, you're not... Oh, okay, um, I thought you were going different. I, I'd emphasize as well that, look, I, I... Unlike some people's views, I, I don't have a problem with them doing weird stuff at halftime sure. for, uh, before the game um, and outside of the stadium itself, uh, as long as you're not going to the Vegas level of extreme stupid and it doesn't have that, an I mean, that's impact, a, that's doesn't a have an that's impact a on the play itself Which it as things such as chucking water balloons right people still arguing about bloody arsenal in the chat <laughs> uh, oh, man. um oh my gosh if you want that go away is premier league team somewhere else i'm sure you can argue with True. um especially, especially <laughs> as far as in our viewers here especially but, um, tier club like but that. To, to, to the <laughs> point here in terms of um Things such as, I mean, get loud, as, as Devin's saying there in the chat. Yeah, that, that bit to me, I don't like. I don't like it. I don't like the things that happen during the uh, in-game. You know, as BJ says, in-game and same won't bring fans in. I think that's a critical thing here, right? If that's what the club is doing and that's the way they're going, what it, what it reeks of at times is we've tried nothing and we've got no more ideas. That's how it feels sure. sometimes. Um, I mean, the get loud stuff during the game even is, uh, it gets alienating at times when you've had a, as a club, you have a tradition of the South End is making the noise. You manage to try and get people up around the, the sidelines as well. And you're managing to get that. They've done that in the past. Sure. I mean, only on simple chance. Yeah, of course. Sure. But like they managed to do that in the past. The problem is, is that when you then start deciding you're going to try doing things like pumping music in and, and all of that, then um, it, it kills that atmosphere. You've got to, you've got to bear in mind that, you can't these things can't coexist i don't think you can't have the get loud type pump up nonsense while also having a supporters group playing drums and singing songs down the one end because what you do is you drown them out and we've seen what's happening in other cities and we see how weak some of those support groups are and the question is is long term is that what phoenix rising wants to do um that that's got to be a serious questioning around this because i know that it will alienate more people as it goes on um, I just think there needs to be some, some thoughts here. I mean, Michael, I know you're saying, you don't think the get loud part is for us. It's for the people on the side and water breaks usually don't like it, but I can see why, but what does it do? Who's, what, what's it, what's it encouraging? Who's, ha- who, who is going home that night and going, oh my God, they told me twice to get loud. I want to go back and see that again. Who is excited by that? Really? Right, it's the sanitization of these sporting events. You see it at things like it's no wonder that like, uh, and I mean, I I rail on America. I, I just absolutely shit on Americans for this all the time. 
Very rare. That's possibly the first time I've sworn on this podcast. I do it all the time for just the lack of atmosphere. The ultimate, like, I'm going to go there and eat my popcorn and sit on the seat and clap my hands when the song tells me to. And it's just the most boring thing ever. But you also have to bear in mind, right, that if you are Phoenix Rising, what is your USP? You are in a market right now that has all of those teams. If you want to go and go be told to go make noise, you can go do that at a major league team that exists in this city. That's the way people look at it. That's the way that the, the sporting fans here look at it as. Rising's identity in a lot of ways is two things. It's, it's winning, which isn't always sustainable, unfortunately. The league is getting better. But winning was a big part of their identity in, in the earlier days. And that's when they were having a lot of success. And I do think the fact that it's a different night out to those other sporting events also can play a difference. And trying to mimic some of the stuff you can't do what the Suns do, what the D-backs do. You can't do it because you won't win that battle. Like, I know the kids, I see the thing there, the kids all seem to love it. They, they do it, but what, what does it do? What does getting loud do? It's the dumbest American sport thing you do. You just make indiscriminate noise. You might as well be screaming at anything, okay? Like, what does that do to an atmosphere? Why are people excited by that? Why are people excited by that? I don't get it. Like, <clears throat> why? That was great. That was that was like, that was like minutes. That was great. No, I know, but I I just That's I fair. just get to the point where as I look at it, I I feel as though it doesn't really add anything in terms of it's not moving the needle but sure. it'll it'll irritate so, some people so, so if you're not going to yeah. move the needle why irritate people so i get going back to mikey's comment i get of like hey it's not necessarily for us it's for other fans but then to contrast with your point it's okay that's fair but what you're saying is even so if people want that type of experience Mm -hmm. You call it sanitized, rightly or wrongly. Okay. It is. Okay. F fair. fair. I, I don't disagree with you, but again, not everyone might have that opinion. Rightly or wrongly, you're saying that if people want that type of experience... <laughs> Sorry, the fucking chat. You guys are fucking absurd. <laughs> if you guys stop, <laughs> stop objectifying... You guys have me completely lost <laughs> if, if you... <laughs> you want that kind of experience, Max? No, what no, 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 no. If, if, if you want that kind of experience, you're saying you can go to, you know, some of the alternatives in town that where maybe it is more heavy on like the graphics and that type of in-game participation type of thing. I think the beauty about what this platform provides, and I say platform being this game, is you won't find a, and where I think Rise of Kalina is, you're not going to find any other sport where you feel like physically, like from a stadium perspective, like where you're sitting, but also from an accessibility standpoint, you will never feel closer to players than this beautiful game. And that's not even the fact that Rising is, oh, USL and the other ones are at the top level of American sports. Even if, if Rising was MLS, yes, there's like realistically bigger stadium or whatever. Okay, sure. That might, you know, put, you know, maybe expands things differently. But even still, the dynamic that, soccer football whatever you want to call it has is inherently so different than anything only else that league. exists there what's that only in this league what do you mean only in really? this league? it's not the same in in other leagues why would why would you inherently be closer necessarily to the players than you are in these other sports the reason you're closer to the players in this level is that you're probably earning more money than they are let's be real seriously R seriously now right i'm also i'm also saying like from a like physical standpoint so how you're closer than, to them than courtside seats in the NBA, how? You're closer yeah. to them than being in the front row at a baseball game along the foul line, what, how? Yeah, but that's also like... You're closer to... It's also super... Like, that's like one player. It's like one player. Well, yeah, it's like, right. it's like It's like the feel of it. I don't know. All, what I'm saying is this. I'm saying the average fan... Now I'm talking about courtside seats are ones that only a very small majority is, can afford. I'm saying if anyone goes to any sort of soccer match, regardless whether you're the highest level seats... Every single match feels very intimate. It's very much, especially when you're in the supporter section 
or when you have a very full stadium. It's a very communal aspect. That's the point I'm getting. I'm not comparing front row to front row. That doesn't well, any, uh, anyone can say communal that. Communal in terms of. I don't know, Max. I'm still just almost struggling with what you get. I'm surprised here. that you're. Know. I'm surprised you're struggling with this. I'm. What I'm saying is, it's it, the fact that like this sport, anyone can go to a Suns match and and stuff like that. It's not saying that it's not communal, right? We have a D backs takeover tonight. Oh, yeah. That's going to be a very okay. So you're on about more with other that's, fans. That's then. a very fun time. But what I'm saying is, it's more so just the dynamic that this sport has with other fans. It's a very different aspect. So it's with fans and it's with just. Just how the how like you go to a match, you're pregame with the supporters, you know, beforehand. You're going into the match, you're having a good time. You can go in the supporter section, you can okay. chant, you can make it a whole camaraderie thing that a lot of other avenues just don't have. And where yeah, I'm, yeah, and where and where um, and where I'm tying where I'm tying all this back to is, I think that's where I don't know. There there's a way to lean further into it, but going back to it, whether or not oh we want to do the get loud chance or stuff like that. I think it comes down to the question of does rising have an issue with getting fans to games or does it have an issue with retaining fans from game to game? But if you're talking about retaining fans from game to game, let me tell you what the bigger issues are. People can go home and they worry about the concessions lines. They worry about the quality and prices of the concessions. They may worry a little bit about stuff before, like at halftime in case you got 15 minutes to, to kill the kid, right? <laughs> <laughs> to kill time with the kids. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. That took a dog turn. <laughs> 15 minutes to kill time with the kids, right? That's fine. Yeah, I get that. Um, But <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, BJ, I think he's right in here, actually. It's about the match, right? In a lot of ways. And it's about so much of you go out there and I think... Uh, Again, I go back to something I said earlier in this thing, which is about the American experience and m maybe what is uh, other things. We've seen, though, and it's... I I, I don't know. It, it gets into a, a thing of... We saw with MLS in the early years, they struggled in terms of trying to Americanize the game at times, in terms of trying to find ways they thought they could appeal to people who are more broadly American in their outlook with the way that they... They consume sport the way that they enjoy their nights out like that and all of that. And it didn't work because you alienate other people who are more core into it, into that sport in particular. And at the end of the day, the people who are dismissive of a lot of your, a lot of football in the first place, the heavy American, the guy who goes to high school football on a Friday night, he ain't going anyway. He ain't going to see rising in the first place. So trying to cater sometimes to people who, I don't know. I, I still just don't know it. I mean, again, I, I get some in the comments here by uh, permission for meek people to feel more involved, but it, it's you're killing the thing that makes rising distinct in some ways um, in this market. You're killing what makes this team different to other teams in this market. Um, it's no surprise that we saw early doors rising really lean, leaned in on showing Images from the South End and people going nuts yeah. and having fun and all of that. And the reason why, again, is because it's just different. It is different. You are selling people yeah. an experience that is different. And I just fear that if you go down the same old, same old that everyone else is, while also being what is perceived as a minor league team in a major league city, it won't work. And again, it, get, it comes down to what is it that's putting people off or uh, after a game. And it, I don't think it's the the idea of the whole get loud stuff. I just don't think that does anything. All it does is wind certain people up for the most part. Sure. I mean... It's the way I'd look yeah. at it. No, it's fair. I, I I personally, on a personal level, I feel very like indifferent towards it. I don't disagree with you. I Like, it's not for me. But also, like, I don't... I, I, I respectfully, I don't care. I don't really care whether they. I just don't think that that kind of stuff moves the needle. I don't think it. I don't. I don't. I don't justify potentially alienating others. Now again, you're right. I don't Marlon think it, keeps hammering in there about winning games. I agree with you. Yeah. But it's not that easy. It's not that easy. No, I. Uh, you, yeah. If you that, that, set up a club where your whole identity is winning games, it's tough. You end up where Phoenix Rising are now. It's tough. Because you can't do it constantly. Yes, no, that's and that, that's exactly it. I think I like you will have downturns. That's exactly you. You, you no know, one wins every year. You have to. You, you look at you look yeah. at you look at Chelsea. What did they do last year? 
Producer Damon, of course. <laughs> nice. Just pulling a face. Nice. No, it's it's <laughs> it's something where you ride the highs and you ride the victories when they come. But that exactly that can't be your identity because you gotta have an identity on that as well. Winning should be a part of your identity, and the club should really be putting all stops out as it should to dominate this league as best they can. Yeah, I agree. They need to back the manager. Yeah. They need to invest. They need to make sure that all the you know, the club is put in the best possible position to end up as high up in the table as it, it will. But uh, again, you, your identity still has to go beyond just winning. I think just winning doesn't cut it. 100%. The, I, the, the Rattlers were great for years and they still. Sure. I mean, they, they were fine, but like. The, the, there's no easy fix here. And obviously, right? Like, you know, the people who are there in, you know, ticket sales and everything like that. Like, this is something that, that's on their mind consistently. This isn't like a foreign concept. This isn't something that doesn't, you know, keep the, keep them up and motivate them throughout their days. I, I'm curious, right? Because it sounds like all the things we we're talking about, there's by no means an easy fix. Is there anything you would implement that you think might help might move the needle? I do think a large part of it is about making sure that people come and actually experience the match day in, in the first place. Um, the more people you get through the door in the first place, the better you're going to be in terms of retention. Rate may not go up, but you've just got a much larger pool of people in the first place to draw from. That's a large part of this, I think. Okay, you need to show people what you can do there. Get people out who've not been to games but have a vague interest. You probably need to think about things such as getting involved with some of these Premier League teams that go out and do watch parties in the morning, right? If they're all going out and doing a watch party, I don't care if it's 20 people there, maybe. They're all football fans. Some of them will not have been to a Phoenix Rising game or don't go regularly. Sure. Absolutely. You want to get them in the door. 100%. And they're, they're an obvious sitting duck kind of... I mean, they are. Kids, it's a low, low hanging kids, fruit. It's, it's mentioned in the in the chat there, a little bit further up from Bad News, but a little bit about... I mean, involved with AYSO or Club Soccer, right? There, there, there's so many people, right, who are involved in this sport at all levels across this very large metro area. And a good number of them will not have been to a Phoenix Rising game yet. Absolutely. Absolutely. Or they, or they haven't gone in a while. You've got that. Yeah. You've also got, right, you've got the college. 100%. ASU is just down the light rail. Yeah. You did the whole light rail partnership with Valley Metro. Why is it? And yes, I know the team will say, well, we do these promotions whereby it's cheaper tickets for college students. And they do. They don't advertise them very well, but they do it. Um, but I mean, in terms of advertising, it's just they're also getting out in person with that. Sure. When I was, a, so to give a bit of back, back on this, right? When I was at Exeter doing my undergrad, Exeter City had a physical presence on campus every so often. They had students who would go. They had their own, like, supporters club. They'd come up on campus. They'd be selling tickets to games. Mm. Okay? There, there was a physical presence and a physical effort to recruit people to go and watch games and get people in through the door. Yeah. I, I just wonder sometimes as I look at it, and I know that the... Look, it, it's, a, it's not an easy job to do. Um... It, I just, as I look at it, I wonder if they're not investing enough in getting out there and being just as reaching as many people to potentially get them in through the door as they could. That's the thing. Yeah. Uh, I think right, you go, you go to the college kids, it's helping to set up like quite literally in ways like the next generation of fandom, whether that's like, whether that however long I mean, they're how many, rising how many, fans how many or whatever. Kids, how many kids wear the Phoenix rising badge playing for their youth team on a weekend and probably never go to games. Sure. Yeah. They're literally representing your club. Sure. Yeah. It's, it's again, it's a lot of people in the chat, right? They're saying, Ride the highs, and this is a good team, too. That's the thing. I mean, right, you definitely want to see the same type of support when the team's not doing well. Uh, listen, people are going to be fickle. Some people, it, poor seasons, weed the people out who just want to see a good team. And, you know, it's not it, – we're not covering the team only when they're good. We've covered them during bad times. You've covered them from oh, – all like last season was, well, quite the experience, to say the least. But it's – um, a bit different to what I've been that's previously a, That's a way month. to put it. Uh, but it's it's right. It's It's – it's finding something that is sustainable and finding the fans who are down for the good times and the bad. It's riding the highs, right? 
me personally, riding the highs, I turn to our friends at OG's Brands. Turn to our friends at OG's Brands when I'm riding the highs because it is a phenomenal time. Helps you out when you're having conversations. You know, of like, hey, how, uh, how's uh, Rising going to get, uh, you know, more people through the door? Or, hey, how's Rising going to finish this year? Oh, is Owen buying, you know, OG's, right? All these things. The answer is OG's. The answer is yes to that last question as well. Check out our friends at OG's. They, you know, they were running the... Uh, you know, 25% off special through the flower shop ended last, uh, you know, uh, you know, at, at the turn of the month. So, hey, we're looking to do some more stuff with them. But I hope you guys were able to get your hands on it. But you know, you can, can you get you can get your hands on the minis are back, baby. The mini OGs are back on the shelves. Good time. That's my personal favorite. What they got offer the the creams. The fruits, the indicas, the sativas, they got it freaking all. Check out our friends at OG's Brands. You can find them on socials everywhere, all platforms, at OG's Brands, and check them out online at ogsbrands.com to find them at a local dispensary near you. You must be 21 years or older to enjoy responsibly. And uh, yeah, while you're checking out OG's, you can also uh, check out our friends at Valley Tap Room. Valley Tap Room had multiple watch parties there. Always a darn good time. Shout out my man Donald. Again, I keep on teasing it. Should be happening here in the next couple months. Might even next month if my ears don't deceive me. There will be a big announcement from our friends at Valley Taproom. We will be involved. It's going to be a darn good time, especially for those of you on the east side. Oh, there's a little spoiler there. But yeah, good time. Valley Taproom. Watch parties. Owen buys beers. Again, Owen buying everything tonight. Nice good man. Go on, good man. Owen buys beers. Really, uh, a poll at the moment. Ooh, no, no, no. We're, we're not there yet. Uh, check no out, check out our friends at Valley Taproom on Instagram where all the latest and greatest information at Valley Taproom. And check them out in person off the 202 and Gilbert. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, shall we? Uh, I know we kind of talked a bit about the table and we've kind of already done around the USL, but anything, anything stick out at you, sir? Oh, good question. Let's have a look. USL Championship. We do have a game tomorrow. A game. It's in the East. It's Memphis 901. They are taking on Tampa Bay Rowdies. Max, what are you thinking? Mm-hmm. Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, what are you thinking score wise? 2 1. 2 1. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. What's the thinking behind there? feels like it. I don't have an explanation. Tampa have secured their playoff spot now after marginally getting past a heavily decimated COVID-affected um, Hartford Athletic squad that only had four players on the bench. Um, All heart, no forward. No. Indeed, indeed. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's... Ugh. I go on. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go with it. I'm gonna say this. Uh, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say that Tampa will win. I'm gonna agree with you on that one, Max. Mm. Okay. Glad we, we agree on something. That's we uh, agree on something. I'm sorry. Are you just just refreshing the poll on different accounts that you have on YouTube. No, 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 no. No, no never. I can. I know. Never, I can. I can never. actually see you doing that. No, I'm not doing it, Max. No, I literally can see no, you doing I'm it. You are literally doing quite it. doing it right next to me as we are doing a live show. This is what you're spending <laughs> your time doing, Mikey. Paul no, says yes. No, I don't <laughs> listen to the damn poll. And of course, going off Albert's chat, who is Max, at the D backs takeover. You demand a recount, Max. I'm saying let's deactivate are you, are this. You Cool. Are you gonna go and go to the YouTube headquarters with your friend Andrew Carlton what? and demand answers? Holy! Do you not trust the sanctity of the poll, man. No, I don't trust the sanctity the sa- of the yes. person who posted it. I didn't post it. I'm not looking at you, <laughs> am I? Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I. All right. Uh, Looks like the poll got ended somehow. I don't oh know. Oh boy! That it, like, uh, oh, the poll ended, answers. and it says Max. Yes, that is qu- no. 54%, that is percent. No, forty-five percent. Wait, wait, let me. Hold, wait, what is what is point? I swear, if that made the difference. Hold on for a second. Twenty-two times point five four. You're telling me that's that, that's almost that's literally like what is that? Twelve to ten? Are you kidding me? So it's almost as if someone who logged into multiple YouTube accounts made the difference. Oh, Max, what were you doing trying to rig it for no? I swear. Max is trying to rig it for no. Hmm. Paul says yes, Max. Yeah, Paul. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, well, it's not happening. I never agreed to, to anything. Mm-hmm. Also, okay. we got multiple super chats uh, on Saturday asking, you know, demanding that I don't. So By multiple, you mean two. That is quite literally multiple. And we only got a singular of people asking for it. The 22 people today uh, in a poll voted uh, 54% yes. 22 people didn't send any super chats. Well, what do you want from me? Got, the, people got, the people have spoken. The people have spoken. People have... 
This we, is a democracy, Max. I'm sorry. Uh, this is no, a democracy. Do, do you have democracy over my feet? <laughs> <laughs> How have we reached this point? We always do. For the last week and a half, it's been topsy turvy on this damn podcast. Oh, dear gosh. Just like Rising got all nine points in eight days, our last eight days have been, well, kind of nuts. We've reached that point. This we really reached We're out. just losing it. It's fine. I do want to shout out uh, people in the chat, many of them, including Albert, are diehards. You guys want to become a diehard. It's a very fun time. Uh, I, Owen, what's your, what's your tagline? What's the reason why people should become a diehard? Uh, so you can go on to, uh, you get an entire different platform that you can cyber bully Max. Uh huh. What is that platform? Uh, it's called Discord. Uh huh. It's pretty cool, huh? It's cool for diehards. Yeah, you can go in there and you can tell Max that he uh, owes beers or OGs or bears or margaritas. Sorry, what was the or th- feet picks? Oh, that's <laughs> I mean, that's uh, that's what I'm hearing. Um, I'm hearing that apparently, producer Damon. Um, uh, but it, bears that was in the chat on I'm, Saturday as well. I'm remember? pretty sure that gets into a different remember kind of platform. Someone in there said Max is picks. buying bears, uh, and you I'm, were going to buy. You had to give five thousand dollars to buy a bear. Do you remember this? Are you saying? You're saying bear? Bear, yeah. Why? Because the chat on Saturday said you were buying bears. Um, no, they mistyped it. I'm not buying no, a bear. No, no, and then it said, give me $5,000 to buy a bear. They did say that, you're right. Yeah, so I, am not buy, buy a bear. I am not buying a bear. Yeah. Where would I keep a bear? Bear. Company that, pet? You want to, I think my... I own two cats. I, I don't vote, think that would go I well. vote that we give it Max's bed. What? I, sure. Max I'm in. Max sleeps on the sofa. I'm in. Reese says yes. It's three to one. There we go. Yeah, agreed. I'm sorry. My life is not a democracy. (laughs) Oh, boy. Any, any, anyway. Oh, Reese is asking the real questions here. Polar bear, grizzly bear. To be fair, SC Collective is right here as well. Keep it weird. We've been winning since this pod got weird. It's actually really true. Let's go. Let's go. We're just trying to see the 2020 golden boot (laughs) feedbacks. Oh, boy. Those are some grizzled (laughs) feet. Those are some tough earned goals. Poachers goals, really. But, uh, yeah. those. Harry Kane. Oh, I haven't seen those feet in a while. Um, on oh, no one else, you won't either. Um, yeah. Anyway, wow. How do we get off track? Uh, shocker. Yes. Become a diehard. Check out phnxlogger Yeah, uh, a whole different platform to cyberbully. Max. Yeah. Hold I, it. Should I just check? Has anyone been cyberbullying you lately in there, Max? They would never do such a thing. They would uh, never do such a thing. Go to phnxlogger.com. Good time. You get a free t-shirt upon signing up. Every year of your membership. A lot of fun stuff. We're always uh, looking to do there. Going to know someone put a we're going streaking gif in there, which is a, a bit that ago. Was true. Uh, wait, Max, Max, you had to tell people that you weren't no free beers. I, I don't, I don't agree with that. Max is buying beers. Anyway, on that note, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna end the show now. I uh, appreciate everyone joining. Santi would do it. Don't you dare! <laughs> don't you dare! All right, this has been the PH Next Rising Podcast. Appreciate everyone joining us. Uh, kind of, you know. I guess uh, y'all are y'all are all right. Uh, where can they find us on Twitter at phnext underscore underscore rising because double the underscore double the feet apparently. <laughs> Two feet makes I, sense. I would be kind of concerned if there was only one foot um, on a person. <laughs> um, you could follow me. How have we reached this point, Max? <gasps> We've completely gone. We have, uh, we've, we've really, the feet have really dominated the conversation. You can follow me on Twitter at Max David Simpson. You could follow Owen on Twitter at, J, at Owen, oh my gosh, OJ Evans 18. Damn. You can follow Damon on Twitter at Damon Dog. That's D A double G, D A W G. Holy crap, Damon Dog, D A W G. Can I get a woof, Mr. Damon? I typically don't do the woofs. The hosts do the woofs. This is fake, but can I, can I get one from you? I'll match you. There we go. And you can follow. Uh, End the wait, show. Wait, you can follow. Just end the show. We, wait, Reese, didn't we find out like a week ago that you've been giving the wrong username he the has, entire time? He has. What is your username, Reese? Right, at Reese eleven underscore. At Reese. Reese eleven underscore. There's only one underscore. He was having like two in different places. Stat like Reese. Follow him at Reese eleven underscore. Uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> right, get him off the show uh, now. I'm hearing that apparently. It's been a beautiful Ma- game, but it's way more beautiful Michael's, when we don't talk about feet. Goodbye. 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 <laughs>